that can stand down. Pop a cold one and sit back and relax. It's time for the John and Heather Show. Featuring John and Heather Toto, Florida's favorite biker couple. Documenting the biker lifestyle and bringing you the latest in events and interviews from the biker world. And now, here's John and Heather. Hey, 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 it's the John and Heather Show coming to you live from our production studio riding with this fine bunch back here born to ride and it's a Tuesday, so you know what we tell them. It's uh, Taco Tuesday, or affectionately known as Taco Tuesday. That's right, and uh, we'll keep that running because you know what? I'm hungry, and I would love me some tacos. Oh, I got it. Who's Here's... got some tacos? You no, know, we have chicken tonight. I know, but and I, I mean jalapeno them. poppers. Too. Hey, well, you know how that is. Happy to have you with us, everybody. Happy yes. Tuesday! So happy to have you with us. And without that, let's go. We got a word from our sponsors. Bikers Hangout Radio. Revved up and ready to bring you the best in rock music and biker culture. Join us for a ride on the wild side. Those are our friends over there across the pond Those in the are, UK. That's right. Those are our friends over across the pond. It's India Hayes and Bikers Hangout, the only worldwide biker app, one of our sponsors of the show. And, and also, also that's Bikers person. Hangout. Um, of course, we were just saying, I'm sorry, Bikers oh, Hangout. Yeah. Well, that's Bikers Hangout Radio. Yes, and Wumble. that's what we're doing, Wumble. That's right. We're on, what, Mondays and, and Fridays. Fridays at 4 o'clock. Oh, that's right. 4 o'clock UK time. So 11 and 4 o'clock. On uh, Mondays and Fridays. Yep, and they're five hours ahead. So eleven o'clock, if you want to tune in, would be four o'clock our time. And it's just, and they do the show uh, on Monday, and then they go ahead and do and, the show again on Friday. And it is um, us talking about current events and current motorcycle events, things that we do, um, you know, and also just you know, it's like a podcast. Around. It's, it's, it's definitely not no, it's play no music. video. It's just talking, and yep. we get to play some awesome. Oh yeah, rock no video. We play some rock and roll, and this week we did all UK favorites. We did Run to the Hills, Iron Maiden, and we did a whole lot of Rosie, um, ACDC, oh, Brian Rosie. Johnson. Oh, put on the comments, baby. Okay. You know, and I'll tell you right now, it's just uh, we got Al lights out there. We got Fangs. Hey Fangs. Hey Al. Thank you for tuning into the show. And I'll hey, 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 hey. That's right. You know, and um, I lost my train of thought. We were talking about the UK and oh, yeah. bikers hangout. Yeah. So anyway, we do the hey, show. Ninja. Hey Ninja. We do the show with Wumble, and you'll like him. You can definitely tell by the British accent when you see him uh, doing the radio broadcast. And I'll tell you right now, it's a fun time. It's a fun show. And go ahead and check it out. That's right. You got to check them out. They are just awesome. And speaking of which, we've got another sponsor. We'll go ahead and bring up. Let's go ahead and bring this one up for you. <laughs> That's Lee Bert Leesburg Bike Fest coming up. We are going to be hanging out with Camp Easy Ride, but we're going to be lousy bartenders with them. And that's what is their motto? Drink. What is their motto? Oh, just simply party, drop, repeat, and leave. And that is what you do. I party, mean, camp you drop, easy ride. you leave, and you repeat. You can't get anybody this Camp Easy Ride. Wonderful. It's Marcus Sir. Oh, look, there. there's some family from Camp Easy Ride. Right Michael. There. We got Michael Crossman. He's Mr. Just... Porkbutt, because he makes the most awesome. Not the <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that didn't come out right. 
she calls me sweet cheek so she can call you pork butt. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Michael. That didn't come out right. I meant you make the you best pork, pork butt. butt. He smoked a pork butt for what, 13 hours? Yes. And so he just pulled a bone out like this. Was, oh my God. It was just, it was falling apart. It was apart. magnificent. You put it on, we got it out, and he just went with his hands, and the whole thing shredded. It was awesome. These are cooked, one of the cooks that we have at Camp Easy Ride. Marcus Sir, he's the uh, owner and CEO. He will be there. And at Windy Acres, guess what? We are going to be co hosts the three of the nights that are there. We're going to be playing party games, serving drinks, at and Camp having Easy at Camp Easy Ride, having a good time. And we're just going to be there. We're going to be documenting, covering. Come see us. It's going to be in two weeks. It's just about two weeks. It's actually, yeah, two weeks. Two Not weeks. this weekend. Next weekend. Next weekend. We will be there at Windy Acres and Camp Easy Ride covering everything that's there. And in a little bit, you need to stay here for the word of the day. It's the final word of the day for our five-word sentence to put together. And also, when we say the word, tune into the show. And then what you got to do is just go ahead and email us at jtodo37 at aol.com, the word and who you are. And then this week, whoever gives us a sentence first, the full sentence is going to be the winner of a $720 prize for Camp Easy Ride with Marcus and full passes to camp to uh, Windy Acres, which is $20. No, they're going to be staying at, at camp Windy e Acres with camp, camp Easy Ride. Ride. They're going to get passes, passes to Leesburg Bike, Bike Fest. Fest. That's what it is. She was able Damn, I spit it all out. Damn, you know. I'm good, but I don't spit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh we got off the wrong side well, okay, guys. Okay, wait. We got a comment from Michael. Well, Michael say one of the best repeat offenders there. Ha 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 ha. Call me pork butt anytime. Take <laughs> a compliment, and Laura. Wow. <laughs> you guys look at thank you very much. Going to the gym. So... Laura, I know, Laura. It's just the show this today. This evening, we're off the rocker. You know, off the chart. You know what they say about us bikers, Laura. We're unpredictable. Unpredictable. That's a good word for us. Unpredictable. And Chris, yes, we look and sound great. You know why we look and sound great? Because, because we've you. got friends in high places no, like I you. Got friends in Not high friends that places. stand in high places because you true. don't stand at high because places. No, she don't, but Pete does. That's true. You guys are such a couple. Yes. What happened over there? We froze up. So anyway, um, we're talking. So Pete came over here. He is guard dog he is the uh founder along with his wife ninja chris she uh, the founders of bikerscare.org if you want to go donate bikerscare.org they can always use extra money 100 percent goes to the kids don't ever forget that bikers are the most charitable people in the world and when it comes to children we don't fool around we don't want anybody to hurt or touch our children and since we're like that uh ninja she is a survivor because there is no victims they're survivors and ninja and her husband give back 100 percent they and raised they the damn line. near five thousand dollars for the community you got you. This five thousand let, let, listen to, let, yeah this weekend yes the ride, saturday they had gonna, the ride oh yeah saturday. we're putting together a video right now we rolled probably any we, we figured anywhere between 150 and 200 motorcycles you know wild crazy woo, bikers, woo, that's woo. Right. That's right, you know, and to top it all off, you know, we had all those plus the people that were doing it. It was twenty dollars a person to do it. Then there's the fifty fifty raffle. Then there is the um the $20 gift card. Oh yeah, twenty dollar lottery. You put twenty dollars in, you at least get a twenty dollar gift certificate, if not more. I mean, Ninja and made great Ninja money on that. Amazing gift. Uh, and the advocacy the groups Mr. were there. Are the advocacy groups were there? So we just had a good time, and then we had Joe Sun Joe Santana. You know, playing. You and know, the kingfish. And the kingfish. And I think it was his cousin was uh, uh, the real, you know, Santana, the, the famous one with Carlos, right? Yes. This yeah. was his cousin. There was a few. It was like Carlos and Tito, and it was a couple different yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. But this like was his cousin Jackson playing. Five. He was really good. You could tell that he took a lot, he played a lot with his cousin because the way he was you know, fingering. He was jamming the sound. Now. Yeah, they, they sounded a lot like him. I mean, he did. But Bikers Care had an amazing ride. I just have to talk about the ride because oh yeah. the ride was off the chart. I was so happy when we were in the parking lot and everybody were at the Citrus County Sheriff's Office. Mm -hmm. And 
the it was just packing up and packing up and packing up. And, yeah, every and, time I turned around, we had to air another line of and cars. Yeah, and it was just so great. Of bikes just, and everybody was talking, and we were going around interviewing people. And oh we yeah, we just had such a good it. time. And so many people who were people that had come. We're so and excited done it years to give. Ago and, and repeat offenders and again. Repeat offenders. Yes, they were there. Back to ride with us again. Yep, and recidivists. Again. And we want those recidivists. Yeah, I'll and, give money and ride for and children. And so that's what we want, guys. You know, I really like. I always say. And please hear me out on this one. Um, abuse does not happen one day a year. Unfortunately, abuse happens 365 See something, say seven something. days a week. Happens all the time. So please help out. Yes, if you um, see something, call say Bikers something. Uh, Bikerscare.org. Mm -hmm. Make a donation and help out a child. Or if you have any questions relating something that's going on, I'm sure they'll be willing to take your phone call. Yes, they will. Yeah. So on that note, it was a great ride. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We mm -hmm. had such a great time. Thank yes. you to all that showed up. Yes. Terrific. And on that note, we're going to talk to you a little bit about what we were talking about with Camp Easy Ride yep. and the word of the day. And we were talking about that. We were going to have the word of the day a little bit later. We're mm -hmm. talking about Camp Easy Ride, how much fun it was and how you establish family when you go. And Michael Crossman, I'm so sorry. I'm so glad. You don't mind if I call you uh, pork butt. Pork butt. <laughs> he said he's good with it. Look, call me pork butt anytime. Yeah, I'll Laura take it says, as a compliment. Wild and crazy bikers that's love right. you all. That's, that's right. That's right, Laura. Bunch we love you, Laura. And crazy bikers. We, we love you, Laura. She's one yeah, of, you of know, our top right. fans, along with our crossman Michael there. You know, and we just have such a great time, Laura. Actually, she she works with us too, helping us get our uh, word out there. And also, one other thing that we just started, I want to mention here, and we got our own www site now. It's called, thank you, Michael. It's called moto-toto.com. We're building the site right yes, now. Yes, we're getting our own website, guys. So, moto Toto. A, a little bit different. We're calling it Moto Toto, and we're going to be taking the show in a little bit of an artistic direction where we're going to have swag that you can buy. We're going to have koozies. We're going to have my pictures as artwork that you can put up on walls. We're going to have a very nice, interesting site with videos and everything else. Anybody can come there, check it out. We'll have it all linked. We're building the site right now, so you got to give us a little bit of time because this is a new... It takes a little while a to build curve. up a website. Yeah, this is a learning curve for us, just like me. I bought a brand new camera, too, because, again, you can tell that we're trying to step up as much as we can for competition purposes, and I bought myself a Canon R5. And that is just an amazing, amazing camera. So yeah, it I'm takes a little to, while. Oh, yeah, there's just so many features on the camera. Literally, it's like, oh, geez, how can you put it? Overwhelming. <laughs> well, it was overwhelming when he bought the camera because at first he was in shock over the sticker price. And we're sick. not going to mention sticker price. We're not going to mention the, how much we spent. All I know is that when it was but done and I saw the price, I physically got ill. He was I literally did. sick. He I was, was sick. sick. To, himself i mean he, we couldn't go out for the rest of the day ramen noodles for john i got a nice camera so now i serve ramen noodles to everybody no i mean literally he was literally sick oh and al thank you al here goes our fan al lights on there oh, oh thank yeah you, al. come so on the toughest after, guys i know yeah al you are one of the toughest guys I yeah know. that guy what well, that guy one time and fangs is on me laughing i mean so after oh, i man. gave my man the pep talk and made him feel better um yeah i say well you need it you need it you need it you're worth it well thank you you I, deserve I it, it and you do baby you, you do know. you need it um we you know we got around and then when we finally got it delivered um it came early actually yeah it came early, it came and early. John, Again, John, the learning john curve. jumped right into it and started working with it yeah. right away mm -hmm. and so so well, far so good well it's a, I can, another type of canon so it was you know pretty good to do that you know and it was good that i had a canon so i was familiarized with the camera because i have an entry-level professional canon the eos m50 and now i shoot with an eos r5 and the, the difference between a professional professional i mean a real solid professional camera which is what i have now compared to an entry-level one is just crazy the camera weighs three times as much too i had to buy a new bag for it because it didn't even fit in my other but one but you know there's uh, there's some of us out there like me i have the um the iPhone 15, yeah. and I love shooting with that. And I so, know professional photographers that will shoot with their iPhone and do their motorcycle shots with their camera. Yeah, that's what I yeah. shoot with. And another because my phone's always with me. That's true. And we also want to do another shout out. Uh, Get Lit LED. Oh yeah, yes, that's Get where Lit we were LED. Today. We were at Get Lit LED just to do a little bit of service on Heather's bike because a little remote thingies. 
you know, eventually, you eventually the remote. And, and I had an older one on my Ultra, which John I'm selling. Took out the Ultra today. I took out the Ultra for its final ride with me. And then I realized why I don't ride a thousand pound bike anymore. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love an Ultra Classic. Ultra Classic is a Cadillac for the road. We were tooling around on the highway at 85 miles an hour. I'm laid back. I got Texas Hippie Coalition cranking. And yeah, I'm, just I'm jamming. I'm jamming. I'm not on a my problem. sport bike. Yeah. And, you know, I'm having a good time. And so we go to Donald's, and he has a driveway that goes down, and then the road goes up. It's a cul-de-sac for drainage. So I back the bike down. No big deal. Back it down. And then the bike went up, and the road's like a dip. And needless to say, my feet are kicking in the air because it's only <laughs> I finally get the bike out, and I had to back it uphill, and here comes Donald coming out to help me move the bike up, and then I'm like, okay, I, I'm, I'm getting it now. Rode the bike home. Oh, I ride great, beautiful bike. I get home, and then I step off that bike, and my prosthetic hip was screaming at me because I had hip surgery almost a year ago. I had to get a big hunk of titanium put in my leg, and riding that 1,000-pound bike, I'm just afraid that if I take a hard left, yeah. like, you know when you stop, and sometimes you get those novices, we'll have the the handlebars like this, and the bike will just take a, a, a dump on you, and then you got to get out and get it. It's happened to me before I fall on the left, which is harder because you can't turn the bike over with no kickstand on the right. The kickstand's always on the left, you know. And I'm afraid if it does that with that new hip, I'll dislocate that faster just by the bike going on it. And we don't need that. No, that's why my soft tail is like this high off the ground. You know, it's easy to ride. I can't even turn it sharp, or I'm dragging. You know. So I got that one. Then I got my sport bike. So if I feel like going like this or like this, I can do it without a problem. And one bike weighs 500. Not one bike weighs 390. Not to mention you like to go out on the track. So. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, the older I get, the faster I want to go. Oh, mm. Midlife crisis, yeah, baby. Yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I'm going through. I'm 52 years old, and I just decided to go race in Ducati. Midlife crisis, honey. Yeah. Well, you got to look at it this way. You know, everybody has their sport. I did boats for a while. Boat bust out another thousand is what I say when you have a boat. And you know it's just as expensive if, if you know. But track bike racing is just as expensive because it's, oh my God. it's easier to trash your bike and hurt yourself than hitting a rock on your boat, which I've done before. You know, and ripped the skeg to rock, busted a prop, stuff like that. It's nothing compared to dropping it at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. But that suit's amazing, man. I mean, that suit that you're on, solid yeah, armor. Not for to head mention, you've got a track day coming up soon. Yeah, my track day yeah, is coming you up. Got May track 6th. Day coming up. May 6th with the Ducati Racing Club. Um, I'm a member of that. So I love my Harleys, guys. Don't get me wrong. I am a Harley man, true and true. But I also like to go fast. And most Harley men, when they want to go fast, they either go get a Triumph Rocket 3 or they'll go get themselves, you know, a, a Ducati. Because it's I got a V twin that's faster than most V twins. And I, I just love how it rides. You know, it's a different ride. Just like it's when I'm on my soft tail, it's a totally different ride. I got 16s on twos. So I'm right about here riding like this. You know, I'm down low doing one of these. Ah, you look so cool. And then when I'm on my sport bike, I'm literally, my head's over the handlebars. I'm like this. You got to turn. You got to put your knee in. But I like doing it, you know. So I'm doing both of them now. And so the Ultra... After I realized how heavy that bike truly is, I could still move it around fine, but I was hurting afterwards. I think, you know, maybe it's important in my life that I need a smaller bike. You know, I don't go trike. I go smaller bike. Yeah. Smaller and faster is what I do. I went smaller and faster is what I did. And just as expensive. Hell, with that summer at the economy, it's a $105,000. Right. One of 100 bikes that will ever be in the USA. It was a... Uh, Ducati Street Fighter V4S Lamborghini Edition, all carbon fiber, that ugly Lamborghini green. I, that bike the bike was, was too, it was too fast. $100,000. It was an amazing bike. $105,000 because I just of carbon want fiber. <laughs> I want the carbon fiber rims. That's all I wanted, man. Those rims are amazing. They were like four ounces or something nuts. I, mean, I don't know. That They're bike super was light. something else. That's for but sure. $105,000 for a motorcycle. Well, the thing is, it's a collector's motorcycle. Even Fabrice. Oh, look, more of the go, go faster. Yeah. Well, uh, exactly <laughs> go faster, man. Yeah. Room, room, baby. Oh, it's Michael Crossman. Yeah, because he's seen my Ducati. Yeah. yeah, he's seen my Ducati. That is a pretty bike. That's my Diav LS 1260. Now he got the smaller one, the Monster. That's a 796, an older Monster. I just set that up for the track, but I kept it street legal so I could still tool around and go and practice. Michael, when are you coming back down? When are we yeah. going to see you? Are you coming yep. for Biketoberfest, Michael? I think so. Do we have another commercial, I think? We have the Sturgis show that we can show. Okay, when we do that. that. We were, remember we were talking about... Um, 
we were going to go to Sturgis, then yeah. we had our wonderful last week we, Woody and Marilyn Stepan. Yeah, Woody, the week. owner and CEO of the Buffalo Chip, was on our show last week talking to us about upcoming events. We're going to have Jelly Roll down at the Buffalo Chip. We're going to have Kid Rock down at the, at the uh, Buffalo Chip. Talking to Woody, Woody seems very happy about it. It's 600 acres of biker fun. Um, the largest V-twin statue in the world is there. The clubs, you know, the biker games. Everything. Just, oh, he's going to Jenny be. Springs, bringing the marshmallows. <laughs> yeah, because Jenny yeah. Springs. Oh, I'm going to lose my sound. Jenny mm -hmm. Springs. The way it is is that we have marshmallow fights when we go there. You get these huge marshmallows and just honk them at each other, man. Bang, ping them off someone's head, and the marshmallows fall in the water, just dissolve when the birds eat them. You know, or whatever, because I guess it's a, a a, it's a floating fight. treat. So we had a mark, and they bought these oversized marshmallows the size of freaking hard balls like this, man. I don't even know where he got them. We were all just hauling them, pinging, pinging them off each other <laughs> and having a great time. And just hanging out in the woods, man. And then the top of it all, check this out. This is funny. One, one thing. Heather has this thing with frogs. I, I hate them. She em. absolutely I hate hates, hates, hates frogs. I, I don't know why. Em. I think frogs are kind of cool, right? But she hates, hates, hates frogs. So we're at Jenny Springs, and the first night we were there, it was a little rainy out, right? And apparently, Jenny Springs is infested with frogs. It was like the, the little worst ones. nightmare known to me. There were these, these little peepee -pee ones. Little ones <laughs> on my ass. Like this big. Oh, okay. now, there was toads. They were going to eat every, me alive. Every they three were feet. going to take me away there, and kill me. I saw like dots on the ground and all the dots started hopping as I'm walking towards them. I'm like, oh my God, my wife's going to freak because I escorted you to the showers at night. Now we went to go take a shower at the showers there. Yeah. So we both went and I, we went there because yes, it was a little dark. Yes. No, and I thought I was going to die. That ground was hopping. I've never seen anything like it. It was like, you know, Moses made the Nile turn to blood and the frogs came out. I've never seen it, pop, 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 pop. And a little, there were little ones and big ones. Most of these little ones are just springy everywhere. And she's freaking out. It was funny. It I'm was sorry. horrible. I'm it sorry. Was my worst you had to be there, but if someone's afraid and of guess frogs, who did they it? find her. Me. Yeah, she guess did. who did it? That's right. Me, this girl right here. I did it. I yes, made it. I walked did. right through it. I didn't scream. I didn't have a fit. I did it. And let me tell you, I stomped Ribbit. them at the Ribbit. leaves. Ribbit. I stomped them. Ribbit. Ribbit. No, you didn't. You were afraid to go near them. You were holding onto my arm and digging your nails into me. You're not supposed to tell. Okay, she was stomping on them. I stomped them. That's gross. Frogs are, cool, frogs are cool, man. No, they're not. Why nasty. do you have little frog statues everywhere? Anyways, we're going to show you a Sturgis video right now. And then we're going to talk to you about our guests coming up. That's right. So let's go ahead and let's mm -hmm. rock, and we're going to show you what we got coming up. We'll watch a little bit of Sturgis video. This and will be my 25th or 26th rally in a row, which is one of the reasons I chose to move out here, is that through... The years before I was married, the years that I was married, and the years after I was married, there was one thing that was consistent every year, and that was coming to the Sturgis Rally. So I'm Joe Melke, Sturgis, South Dakota. I do leather work, woodwork, but what I'm most known for is metal shaping and doing custom work within the American V-Twin. One summer here at the Buffalo Chip during rally, this building set vacant for most of the rally, and I looked at it every day. I'm looking to restart my business and just go someplace new and just reinvent myself. Within a month, I moved in, and that was four and a half years ago. I decided to put on a motorcycle show during the Sturgis rally that was FXRs only. It's the biggest single day bike show that happens during the rally. Uh, we usually have about 130 motorcycles and that's a lot for two only two models of Harley-Davidson motorcycles that actually aren't even manufactured anymore and we raise money for a local charity and, and we just hang out and have a good time and that's that's what has held me here at the Buffalo Chip and the fact that I'm here in this building earning a living, messing with motorcycles, being creative with my... All right, guys. I think we had a little technical difficulty there. We're sorry. All right. Let's go ahead and try this over again. Let's try one. This will be my 25th or 26th rally in a row, which is one of the reasons I chose to move out here, is that through 
the years before I was married, the years that I was married, and the years after I was married, there was one thing that was consistent every year, and that was coming to the Sturgis Rally. So I'm Joe Melke, Sturgis, South Dakota. I do leather work, woodwork, but what I'm most known for is metal shaping and doing custom work within the American V-Twin. One summer here at the Buffalo Chip during rally, this building set vacant for most of the rally, and I looked at it every day. I'm looking to restart my business and just go someplace new and just reinvent myself. Within a month, I moved in, and that was four and a half years ago. I decided to put on a motorcycle show during the Sturgis Rally that was FXRs only. It's the biggest single day bike show that happens during the rally. Uh, we usually have about 130 motorcycles, and that's a lot for two only two models of Harley-Davidson motorcycles that actually aren't even manufactured anymore. And we raise money for a local charity, and, and we just hang out and have a good time. And that's, that's what has held me here at the Buffalo Chip. And the fact that I'm here in this building earning a living, messing with motorcycles, being creative with my hands and my my brain and time to time actually earning a living doing it, you know, is my freedom. Yay, it worked. I'm sorry about that, guys. I dropped something on the keyboard. Everything just went dark. <laughs> <laughs> we were freaking out. So anyway, guys, that was Sturgis. I, we always like playing that one. That's just a powerful video that everybody likes to see. And anytime you want to play a powerful video, I always find it good, you know, uh, when someone speaks highly about what's going on. Now, since it's halfway through the show, are you ready? Uh, I the am. Word of the day? I sure am. You I'm ready, ready to give that okay. word of the day. The word of the day. Okay. Now, this is for the... I hope everybody's listening. Everybody's listening right now because we're going to do the word of the day and then introduce our guests, okay? The word of the day is easy ride, as in camp easy ride. They better so listen. this week for the fifth week, and it's the fifth word, it's easy ride. What you do is you go to John, all lowercase J, sorry, not John, you go to J, Toto, T O T O 37 at AOL.com, and you please put in your name and the word of the day. Now, we have released five words over the past five weeks. The prize is for a full three day, two night, right? Three day, yeah. Three day, two night stay at Camp Easy Ride, courtesy of Marcus Sir. Uh, full passes to Leesburg, Windy Acres. Leesburg Bike Fest. Bike Fest for you and a, a, a second and person. they're staying at Camp Easy Ride, which is <laughs> at Windy Acres. Yes, and it's a $720 value for anybody out there. So this is the last week. It's coming up in two weeks, right? That's right. So, and we are going to be there. We are playing mm -hmm. bartenders. Yes, we're going to be lousy bartenders because we really don't drink. So I'll be making myself little Shirley Temples or whatever like that, like little virgin daiquiris or whatever. And we'll you guys, be making your drink. We're going to be making your drink. And let me tell drink. you, I like to have a happy person in my bar. Oh, yeah, we're going to have happy people. We're going to have games. We're going to have adult twist. I got a everything. lot of fun games for yes, you guys to play. Cornhole and ring tours. And we, we're going to bring everything there. And plus, I've got some adult card games and things like that. It's oh, my God. Fun. We are going to have such a great Yeah, we're going to be hour. there from 6.30 to... I'm not entirely sure of like, exactly what the time about will right. be. It's about uh, in the neighborhood of 6 to 8, yeah, we between, will be there. We will be there between, right, roughly between 6 and 8 at Camp Easy Ride. It will be open bar. We bought the booze and so be Marcus. And we will be serving. Anybody who wants to show up and spend some time with the John and Heather Show and Camp Easy Ride, just go ahead and calm down. Oh, you got a couple more comments. I'll go ahead and uh, come down, and we will be there. So let's see. I wish I could make it to Leesburg. Yeah, I know. Oh, oh. Michael, I know. I wish you yeah. could come too, Michael. Yeah, I know. I know. So we're going to be co-hosting uh, Camp Easy Ride for that time for like, a, for like a couple hours, playing games and just having a good time. So this week's word of the day is Easy Ride. Put together all five words from all five weeks. We jumble them up, have a completed sentence, and then guess what? You're going to win. Whoever comes in first and emails us, what the proper 
sentence that we did. You have to watch all five shows right around the half hour mark, right at the end of A Block. We go ahead I and mean, say, we're giving it to you guys. Yes, we are. So easy ride, the last word of the day. So I know we've had some fans that's really been keeping track. So whoever gets it in first and have a couple people do it and get it right. You know, I'm not going to be like that. Then we're going to have a drawing. Okay, if a couple people get it, we're going to give everybody a chance. That's right. You know, that's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. You know, if somebody just boom gives me that thing right away before everybody else and yell, then they win. Then they win. But if I get a couple people that start trickling in all this because they're watching it, then I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do a drawing. I'll bring out my big Harley box here and I'll pull a name out of the hat from everybody that applied. Okay, and now, right. now we're going to our guest. Our guests. Okay, we have guests sitting in the green turtle. room right now. Turtle we have good Turtle water. Goodwater and Barnfire. We have them in the green room right now. Hey, guys, are you there right now? Go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you're ready to talk. I see a thumbs up. Go ahead and bring them on the stage. All baby. right, let's go ahead. And there you go. You want to use that? Yeah, use that one. How you guys doing? How to do? How's it going? How uh, you we're doing? doing? Fun. We want to get a good screen so we can see everybody. There we go. All right. How you guys doing? Not too bad. How about you guys? Pretty good. So you guys, I was listening to some of your music. It's like three different genres. Yeah. I heard. And what? What? How would you classify yourself? Is it country? Is it bluegrass? Is it your own style? We couldn't quite figure it out. Well, the uh, the full band Barnfire, we're a classic like country and honky tonk. Okay. Like out, classic outlaw style, like country and honky tonk. But then uh, Nick, Nick and I, Nick and I also play uh, bluegrass together. That's I. I definitely heard a lot of bluegrass influence, and also a little Elvis. I could have heard maybe a little Elvis in there too. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. The way you were singing and the way the songs were, that's all I heard because I lived in Missouri for a while, and I lived by a bluegrass festival grounds. So once I heard that, boom, I, I had I was like, that's bluegrass. I can hear it, that that overtones and you know, all that extra, you know, stuff that goes in there with an eclectic sound like you have. You know. So tell me, Turtle, how did you get that name? Well, uh, interesting name. Yeah. Well, when I was young, I I did a Native American sweat lodges. And I okay. was in a coming of age ceremony when I was 13. And uh I I took the name Turtle to remember a, a a teaching like a learning that i received like took the name turtle to just carry that with me through my life so you yeah. you have you continued did you continue the teachings after your teenage years well, into after, your adulthood? yeah well like no after i left home i did not keep uh in the you know i didn't didn't search out any other ceremonies or anything no okay yeah because yeah, we have a friend ten bears who does a lot of that he's native american you know, he arrives at the Warriors MC and he does that because one time we were having a bad time and he sent us an Indian prayer. And it was the nicest thing I've ever had seen anybody do because it was really non denominational. And it just showed, you know, the love of everything just from that Indian prayer. And I can understand it. I, I really can. So, um, also, what were some of your biggest influences? And both well, of you guys, what was your biggest influence? Well, for me, a lot of my biggest influences where I grew up in Indiana was kind of steeped in bluegrass. It was like kind of part of the the old old school culture there, so you know I grew up just around everybody playing an instrument. Everybody you know played bluegrass, a handful of traditional tunes, you know, and that's definitely like where my roots in music are is with bluegrass music. And you say you when you grew up, how old are you? I'm 41. Okay, so you still have a lot of growing up to do. Well, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know what I mean, like, a bit older than he is. We still know, have growing up to do. <laughs> I mean, like, as a teenager and younger, you know, I was around a lot of bluegrass pickers as a teenager and younger. That's isn't that hard to to Pick, do, especially the banjo. That's a hard instrument, man. It's, it's yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely new nuanced music, but you know, I grew up around it, so I took pretty naturally to it. It all came pretty naturally. Cool. And what do you play over there? What, what's it? What's your instrument? Oh, I play bass. Yeah, I play bass and barn fire and then mandolin when we're doing uh, some bluegrass. Um, and then sometimes the upright bass as well. Um, yeah, just a lot of like uh, whatever records my parents were playing, you know, growing up, just listening to all the just classic music. Uh, kind of deviated later on in my life, played some metal. Um, so we, we kind of get some of that like hard driving, you know, kind of... Uh, grit uh that i bring to the band you know to kind of make it more uh you know not pop country per se but 
uh, more outlaw and rough around the edges, you know. That sounds wonderful. I mean, because by doing that, you could bring in those bassy tones and get it like that weird metallic a bass riff in the background, then have the mandolin music over the top of that and turn that whole thing into bluegrass just by doing that. Exactly. You know, that's I always found that interesting. Yeah. Another thing I'd like to know is both of you guys, who is your famous most who is your favorite performer and why? I mean, uh, for me, I, I don't know. I have to say, uh, I can't narrow it down to just one. Okay. There's like so many different artists that are doing so many different things, you know. But that is I, Who's I your think, favorite musician? Yeah, if I had to listen to something right now, who, what's on your playlist? I think I could speak for both of us and uh, Dale Watson right now. He's, Definitely. He's a living legend, um, mm -hmm. you know, right up there with Johnny Cash, but didn't really get the total, you know, coverage as everyone else did, but he's still out there still playing shows just working it you know he's finally uh come to a really good place where he's starting to yeah. get more and more recognition we just uh you know he we just played a show with him uh last year and it's just amazing to see him you know let alone to play a show with him uh but yeah definitely check out dale watson Dale Watson. Okay. Okay. I'm not familiar with dale watson no no we'll have to check yeah. him out definitely. yeah definitely i will definitely check him out now, when you're playing on the road or you're playing, whether it's one of your music, one of your songs or something, what's your favorite song to play? What's your favorite song? If you had to pick a song to play together and jam right now, what would it be? Oh, man. Like, a lot of my favorite music to play is Waylon, but, you mm -hmm. know, we do, like, Nick and I have played so many, so much of that bluegrass for a while, it would probably end up being a bluegrass song. Yeah, <laughs> just when it gets, the train starts going and you can't stop it and we're just breakneck speed, you know, that's just a lot of fun. You see the crowd just jumping up and down and loving it and, you know right when you think they're gonna you know pass out from moving so much and then you, you take the break and then you get right back into it yeah. that is so cool <laughs> i love that you guys have a lot of energy yeah i mean you definitely do hey how about we play one yeah, of let's play one of your what we're gonna videos. do is we're gonna play one of your videos right now so everybody can hear your music all right let's see all right yeah, yeah we're go gonna go ahead and show that one right now okay we're gonna show which one do you want to do? You want to do bonfire at the rock side? Yeah. All right, we're gonna do but we're gonna do you guys at the rock side, so one that we have uh, queued up. Go ahead and play it. Okay. Right?
sing the sunshine sing. I don't know when you're out looking for some prison. That's where I want to stay. I let that long whistle blow my fears away. Oh man, I like I love myself some Johnny Cash and everybody getting drunk listening to it. You can't get any better than that. Heck yeah. Oh yeah. So where was that? Yeah, where is that venue at? Yeah, some comments. That was up uh out by Hawkins Bar here in uh, Northern California at a a bar called uh, the Rock Slide. Yeah, I think it might have even been a a bike event too. Seemed like the right type of people there. We got a couple fans calling. Uh, what's up from Donald? That's from Get Lit LED. Fangs, he's saying that you guys could come down to our neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, that's one of our biggest fans, Fangs. He uh, he loves uh, country, bluegrass, stuff he's like that. He's got the best voice, too. He, he sounds kind of like you sound, too. Yeah, like a country singer, that deep, nice. you know voice you know and he said he's has done a little bit of country singing but he's just a good fellow he's a good friend of ours he wants you to come down and listen so he can listen to you too you have it down here in florida man judy. look at that judy i always feel like it looks like a great time here got all our fans loving the event that you were at you know so yeah one of these days you need to come down to our neck of the woods turtle i really live down in florida we're, we're trying to figure out how to put the uh, instruments on the back of the bike though <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you can do it, man. I had a damn muffler fall off on me one time. It snapped off the weld, and there's Heather holding the muffler like this on the back of my <laughs> altar the whole way home. You know, it's possible. Just have your girlfriend hold a guitar, man, like that. <laughs> Going down the road. <laughs> now, I love listening to Johnny Cash, and that's just one of them music, you know, Burning Ring of Fire, a Folsom Prison Blues. You put that on, people are going to get up there and dance. What do you think is your most popular song that you get out there and play, whether it's yours or somebody else, and bam, that dance floor is full? I don't know. Dirty Looks and <clears throat> Spilled Beer. One of our original tunes, Dirty Looks and Spilled Beer. It's I love a, it. It's a really nice honky-tonk tune that always gets them going. That is so cool, man. So where are you guys going to be playing uh, next? I mean, are, are you right now touring, or, or where are you at? Well, so right now we've been kind of taking it easy this summer. You know, we've been at it like for about almost eight years now. And we usually just gig pretty relentlessly. Like during our busy season in a busy summer, you know, we're doing sometimes two to three gigs in a week. You know, and so th this summer we've just kind of taking it easy, writing a little bit more music. We've yep. the only shows we have booked right now in August, we're going up to Seattle. And we're gonna play the uh, the hopped up chopper show up in oh, Seattle, cool. and we've got a few other. We're playing the Landmark Saloon in Portland. We're also gonna play the Ace Tavern over in Gaston, Oregon. Wow! So you get around? Yeah, yeah. We we do what we can. We do what we can. You know, for we're kind of like a small town mountain band. We play a lot of rural venues. We play for a lot of different bike events yeah a lot of different people in the biker community and a lot of the different clubs and you know so we, we get around as much as we can yeah because that genre of music is very popular like out here rockabilly is popular we have jeff Vitolo and the quarter mile rebels and you wouldn't think that a bunch of bikers would want to hear you know oh johnny she wants cash to know if you play red solo cup <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> Toby Keith. Toby Keith. Oh, yeah. a weird song, which she wants to know. You know, you for some strange reason, I love that song too. Yeah, that is like an ultimate party song. One of the fans wants to know. Oh my God! You play it. One of the fans just asked that question. <laughs> no, we do not play that song. No, not yet. Oh, yeah. it's, it's possible we could in the future, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Red Solo Cup. I mean, so the answer, Judy, is no, no, not yet. But they will play it if you ask them nicely, and they're down here. Maybe they might do it for you. You never, you never know. know. We love musicians on this show, and they try to help out all the fans they can. And I think we have some more music from. We them, do. Don't we you? have another video. And we got another video from you guys. Let's see which one we got now. We have. Where is this one? No, don't go up. You had it, baby. No doubt. 
Yeah, Edge right. of the yeah, Sunset is a real good one. We got um, what's that born movie? Move the mouse. Born, born to Ro Rome. Is that the one? Yeah. Okay, born to Rome. Sponsor. Bikers Info USA, the first bikers app by bikers, for bikers, and it's free. National and state events, Sturgis and Daytona, Bikers Info USA. Every motorcycle manufacturer dealer listed, biker products for you and your bike. Bikers Info USA, find the places to go, places to party, places to stay at every event, Bikers Info USA. Download it now, it's free. Bikers Info USA. All right, we had to have a little word for our sponsors during the break. That was a cool song. I like that. Now we, that looked like a neat. Yeah, where was that place? Venue. So that was at one of the local uh, cider houses here in the area that we live. Oh. And that that's the uh, the barrel room where they where they age the the wine and cider. Oh, cool. That's cool. Yeah, they hold yeah, events there. I love. I used to drink. I love hard cider, man. Yeah, now all right. that tastes good. Oh yeah, it tastes like um. You know what apple cider tastes like? Imagine yeah. with a little bit of fizz to it, a little tangy fizz to it. That's cider, like Angry Orchard stuff. That's really and they good. Put booze in it. It is boozy because what happens is it ferments. Oh, and it gets boozy. That's how. That's how you make cider, right? You let let it sit and ferment and age. No thanks. It's good. Knock me out. Oh, uh, this is she. I'll tell you right now. Last time, the one time I've or twice I've seen her drink. 
She had a shot of fireball and half a beer and had a pin her against the back of my ultra so she wouldn't slide off. <laughs> <laughs> I do not handle alcohol. Well. No, she does not handle her booze well. And our fan Judy out there said bummer, but she wants to see you anyway about Red Solo Cup. <laughs> Oh, well, that's, that's a Toby Keith's a legend, man. You know, everybody loved Toby yeah. Keith. It's too bad that a, a man with that much talent had to leave this world so soon. Yeah, but look at everything they left. Oh, oh yeah, like don't let the old man in. Line. I mean, you can't get a better fair. It's like they had a um, a song of him singing "Don't Let the Old Man In," and he, in an interview, said that Clint Eastwood is the one that told him that. That he said that he was hanging out with Clinton one time, and you know he's in his nineties and still going 99. strong. Oh, do and he goes, "How come you stay so spry and you can keep doing everything?" And he looked at Toby Keith and said, "Because I don't let the old man in." And when he heard that, he wrote that song, and they had a final performance. What you can see him—he's sick. He was so thin, I barely recognized him, but you can hear the voice. And he sang, "Don't let the." I'm getting goosebumps right now. That's what music does to me. Thinking about him singing that song for the last time. I get goosebumps. That's how I feel about music. And I'm sure the way you guys feel about music is the same way. You can think of a song in your head and a place and time that you were at and just the really song cool. and the place and time sets the mood. And that's what you guys bring to the table. That's really what you guys bring to the table. That's why I love artists when they come onto the yeah. show because there, there could have been somebody at that, that place at the, where you just played before that had the best night of their life, and they're going to remember that every single time because you were on stage playing, and that's the music in the background. you know. And that's how I feel about artists that have their own songs. Like one of our favorite bands that we have going on right now is Texas Hippie Coalition, and that's not a big, real recognized band, but you know, it's their original. And like you are the same way. You have original songs you're not covering you make your own music and that's what i find so enjoyable exactly. about listening to a man like you yeah there's fangs again saying that you would fit in down here we need an originally what do you say guys would fit in down here we need original we need instead of company instead, instead of cover bands, bands. Uh, Scooter Haven. Scooter Haven. Yeah, yeah, at the Haven. Haven Scooter Haven. It's in English, Florida. It's owned by Scooter Redneck Paradise. Haven, Redneck Paradise. I mean, we're talking <laughs> uh, about bus is the bar, and they cut it out. You go up there and they have an actual fan boat, and the fan spins to cool the stage down. Um, you know, they got an Easter Island head in the middle. Why? Who knows? You know, just watch one of our videos. Yeah, on Scooter, Scooter Haven. Haven. You'll it, see what it is. It's, it's, it's one fantastic. of our favorite local venues. It's in the woods. I mean, you know, bugs the size of your fist. I mean, the whole nine yards. It's great. You know, and we always have really good bands play down there. And I'm sure, you know, you would be more than welcome to come down here. Even with our fan base, I know definitely would love to listen to some good oh, bluegrass. Shoot. They would love well, no, you. Don't threaten us with a good time because we might just see you. <laughs> <laughs> we will put you in touch with them. Never oh, know. my God. Yes, because we always love good original music. And that's why, like I said, the same thing. Anytime an artist can perform their own music, it's always going to be, what is he saying? Get them booked. Get, Get them booked. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're not playing. We're serious. We're not, you never yeah, know. You, you have know. our number now. Yeah, you have our number. And if you're ever in the area, we'll give you a Screwy Louie's number. He's the owner. He can get you in there. That's right. Now. And, and we there's always a lot of events there. We just did one for 50 Legs. 50 Legs is a charitable organization that gives prosthetics to children that can't afford them. Can't get better than that. Yeah. And the, uh, and the CEO of that place, of, of that company, 50 Legs, used to be a professional wrestler, Steve Chamberlain. So he's just a cool dude. You know, and he brings the big nasty with him down there too. One of the older wrestlers, you know, and just have a good time. And I'll tell you right now, you guys would fit in. They would do well. Yeah, uh, you would fit in. You know what I'm saying? Just like right on next, you'd fit right in down here. <laughs> you know, we'll uh, try to make it out that way. Definitely. What new music and what new stuff do you have in, in the uh, in in the chamber for everybody? Well, we've got some, uh, like Nick and I write music together. We've got a few songs that we've been working on together. And I, I also write my own music independently uh, as well as Nick. And, uh, you know, we, we're suckers for those old classics too. So we, the, the cover tunes that we do play, we stick to that classic country. So we've got to, you know, digging into the honky tonk archives a little bit to pull out some good ones. Right. Yeah. We're not trying to really uh, reinvent the wheel because it's, you know, just so classic and so good. So we want to 
try to make original music, you know, uh, you know, circa 1970, 60 country, right. honky tonk, you know. Take that song and make it your own. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Put your twist on it. And a lot of bands do that. We know a band named Twisted Minds Incorporated, and they'll do Ice Ice Baby, but they're a heavy metal thrash band. Okay, okay. <laughs> And they will do ice, ice, baby. And I'll and tell you, it what, comes out awesome. It, okay. I mean, you wouldn't think that it would go like when they do a mashup, you know, but it, it went. Vanilla Ice sang thrash hardcore, man. It's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? And we got our friend Ronnie Galetti right now cutting his new album for Nasty Savage, yeah. too. You know, so we love our musicians no matter what. We love them. Now, I want to say, since the show started to get towards the end, now, if anybody wants to listen to your music, or buy your swag, you. get in touch and book you. How would they do that, Turtle? Well, the easiest ways to get in touch with us and to uh, listen to our music is to follow us on our social media platforms because we actually, we're a gigging band. When we're, when we're hitting it, we're hitting it hard. We, we gig relentlessly. We, you know, we've got next to no recordings out. When, when you come to our shows, We'll have CDs and like shirts and merch for you at our shows. But for the most part, we just encourage you to come out to our shows and to support your local musicians. You know, even the out of town guys that roll through town, it's like, you know, just support your local artists when they come through. And uh, our social media, gotcha. you can follow us on Facebook at a uh, Barnfire, you'll find us. And on Instagram, we're Barnfire Country Music. And then also you can uh, look up a uh, turtle good water for my YouTube channel. And I have a lot of videos. I always try to pull our videos from. So if anybody wants to see videos like we played, uh, turtle has all those videos out yeah. there. Heather just pulled a couple and put them up here in our queue to be able to show you guys a genre. But if you want to listen to turtle, like you said, good was you said it was turtle, turtle good, good water. water. Yep. Turtle good water. You can uh, follow barn fire at Barnfire Country Music on Instagram, and also find me Honky Tonk Hillbilly on Instagram. I love that Honky Tonk Hillbilly. I love it. And Nick, do you have anything to say over there, buddy? No, just a lot of uh, you know we're working on uh, getting some more you know music videos and, and some online you know music so you can download it. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much we're just typically playing shows so much that we haven't really set, got to be able to go into the studio. So that's what we're trying to do right now. But um, yeah, either just try to catch us in person um, or, you know, coming up here uh, this summer, we'll probably have some more stuff to download. So. Well, we wish you yeah. the best. And we look forward to seeing your new music that comes out. You guys, it's been a pleasure having you it on sure the has. show. Thank you for sharing your music with keep us and our shiny fans. Side up. And rubber side down and keep plugging away, brother. You Thank you for it. having us. Thank you so much. Oh, anytime. Thank you for being on. Maybe I'll see you guys. <laughs> yeah, yes, you definitely. Never know. Definitely. Uh, there you go. All right, guys. Well, you guys have yourself a wonderful night. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us and mm -hmm. supporting us this evening and this week. Yes. We will see you guys next week. And one more time, the word of the week is Easy Ride. That's, That's right. Camp Easy Ride. Please go ahead and email at jtoto37 at aol.com with the word and who you are. The first person with the sentence can win. If a couple people trickle in, don't quite know it, we will do a drawing of all the contestants. And we're going to check that it. email so you yes. guys go ahead and you got get one it, week Because Let's next go. week we will be telling who is the winner of our $720 giveaway for our Windy Acres Camp Easy Ride three-day, two-night vacation. The John Heather Show will tell next week who the winner is. We're going to even try to contact him on the show. Why not? Because if you're watching the show, anybody that's participated really needs to watch the show next week. That's right. Because we will be telling who the guest is. We'll try to call them up and get them on. I'll hold them up to my little mic here, and we'll get some comments from everybody. We have a couple of our well, really we'll good guests. We'll let them know beforehand. Before yeah, we're not going to blindside you. We won't blindside we'll you. We'll let you know before. All righty, guys. We want to tell you to keep a shiny side up. And rubber side down. We love you all, and you guys have a great night. Deuces. Deuces.